Hi there, sign of Virgo. How are you doing? This is Kim here to do your reading tonight. It's a lovely night and I either love doing readings first thing in the morning or, or late at night. Either or, but it's got to be the extreme. All right. Let's see. Kim Plans Wild Unknown Alchemy Deck. What you got for Virgo? What you got for Virgo? Can be any placement here, Virgo, also. Let me say that. As long as you know how to apply it. But really, yeah, I mean... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Thank you for the support, by the way, with the private readings. Those have been going really good, and I get good feedback on them. If you want one, they're based on time as far as price. They're $22 to $60 in the description box is how to get one. And it's a pre-recorded reading. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And thank you, of course, for comment. I love your comments. I love your comments. Okay. Lead, I think, is number 82. Number eighty-two, I think. All right, so we have we have the void on the bottom of the deck. Sometimes that's about actually getting um, into a void, the void, like the state. You know what I mean? Like a state of no mind. Actually, the state of no mind. Getting in there. So. It could be spirit, like literally saying we are um, thinking a whole lot more about something than we maybe necess that may be necessary. It might be that you may get more information the more you pull back on your thinking. All right. So the first card though out was the lead card, and the lead card. Um, is heavy it would mean that a definite transition of you being in one like and it might be a decision that leads you from one place to another completely it may be a complete change of scenery complete change of I don't know anything looks relationship status it's a heavy decision like a big decision um, you are protected when I see this card because I think of lead, I think of something heavy and protective, like a shield, like a force field, almost very heavy and protective around you as you make some kind of big transition in your life. It is big. It is big because um, the Ouroboro showed up. All right, and then the moon. Hmm. That might be why you need to clear your mind or you've been instructed to clear your mind as best as, as best as you can because the moon is in outer space. Well, what are the, and I think of the term space out. Space out, but in the best way possible. <laughs> Spirit is saying space out here, Virgo, because there's the moon is associated, yes, with change, changes. We think of the feminine aspect. So it could be something that is, it could be similar to Taurus's reading. It is your sister sign, so I'm going to pull a little bit of there message which was there's a stillness and in this stillness where you space out you put yourself in the energy to receive 
and there could be spiritual gifts, especially with intuition and things like that being high with the moon. There can be spiritual gifts, uh, uh, like a spiritual upgrade, you could call it. But there's something about being still and open and receptive to receive it. In my mind, I'm like, why? <laughs> why can't you just receive it while you're doing anything? Mm. Mm. Because the words, somehow the words are similar to a limiting belief or getting in the way of something being, of spirit being able to go open a door to you. Um, not, not that you, you're not cut off or anything like that. I'm talking about for this, it feels like a package for this big package from spirit to get through. You, you have to be in the receptive mode. It's that big of a package. It's that big of a upgrade. It can could be that you're thinking a lot of heavy, heavy, big things. So at the time, at this time, it may be difficult. That might be the why that, that that's the main message then for you. Let's go ahead and get, um, let's pull from this circle of life deck for Virgo. Yeah, breathe, just breathe. And they're wanting me to share of what happened today was I took a nap and it was on accident that um that I woke up to this sound of um you know a pan a pan drum what a pan drum sounds like it's absolutely beautiful if you've ever hear, heard a, 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 a music um a pan drum has a very very beautiful soothing sound like air and metal together. I don't know. It's so beautiful. But I woke up to that sound and I looked down at my phone and um, it had just randomly, which is weird because usually when I'm watching something, it will click off and it will be off. It won't keep on going and going and going. But it played it. It was a sacral, no, solar plexus, sorry, solar plexus clearing meditation. And, um, and it was doing it for me while I was resting for my whole nap so maybe that's something you could also find yourself doing or being inclined to do if it's hard to do it while you're awake if it's hard to meditate or clear your mind while you're awake then having some sort of thing playing while you're sleeping that will aid or assist in ultimate relaxation seven of cups reverse and the seven of pentacle i'll, I'll put them upright though so that we can see them so seven of cups reverse means that you're seeing something clearly now. That you're seeing something clearly for what it is. Okay, that that's thus you know okay, I take this as like you know what you want. You know what you want. You have okay, you have your seven of pentacle. She has all her eggs in a basket here. That's <laughs> and um so there's there's a lot of things here. She has a scarab beetle on a fishing pole. Like, scarab beetle is rep represents magic and um, was associated with magic in Egyptian times. And so it's like, you already have invested and now you're ready to pull in some more magic. Something like that. And seven and seven in my numbers deck will tell you about being brave, bold, confident, 
through a spiritual challenge. So this was like this when we got the rotation card. So it has, it has something to do with a cycle completion, I see. One that you've done a lot. One that you've done a lot. It can it can be a round and round with a in a karmic relationship. It can be an actual pattern or behavior. Maybe it's maladaptive. Maybe you've realized, oh, okay, I see clearly now I don't need to do it like this. Or I see clearly I need moderation or balance. And so that moderation or balance is gonna be different than what you had than the web you had created with the off balance. So you're seeing something clear, and now it's time for that web to come down and a new one to come up. And you are, and you are with the great serpent. This is the Ouroboros that says that there's an, an ending, like in sight, for, the new, for a new cycle. And this is about the cycle, the journey. It's a journey coming up. That uh, might be preparing you for this journey. Okay, what else? Another oral burrow. <laughs> it's the Five of Pentacles, and it could say that you may be seeing clearly um, through a hardship, a difficulty. Could be financial or health, but it is telling me about the place that you're at right now. It could feel lonely in this spot. You could feel like an outsider. It can be like an alone feeling through a hardship. Um, but see, it has the Ouroboros on it too. So it's a new chapter from this energy. This energy, I could look, it could have gone on for a long time. And it's ready to wrap up, but I'm going to say that it was probably here for a long time. Because of the Seven of Pentacles, you've been doing the things that you're supposed to do. To put an end to this hardship or this struggle. It can even be a focus on your health as the Seven of Cups reverse. Is you paying attention to your choices that you're putting, what you're putting into your body and the Seven of Pentacles is being very aware of choices and their consequences. Again, moderation. Aristotle, moderation in all things. Aristotle. It's a good, um, it's a good saying. I think that this is the page of cups. And the devil on the bottom. So that's about releasing your attachments to things that were whatever whatever was keeping you in a rotation like that. A page of cups would be something kind of new. <clears throat> Loving, new. To represent your glow up, your transformation, or your change. Whoa, that spun around. The Four of Wands, okay. In this card, in this deck, it really looks like you're going to be celebrating with others. Maybe on a similar soul path. Or something like that. Um, it's a celebration. It can be a coming together with members of your soul group or your soul family. It can, in other, in traditional tarot too, I would say that it could represent a wedding. Whatever it is, it will be something that like you have, this could show that you have practiced now. You have gone round and round and done a lot of things. It could be talking about other lifetimes. Like you've done something, you've practiced so much that... There's going to be something to celebrate. And this can be the new chapter in your life where there's a new house or a new car or just something really big. New location. And they're giving two of them. Okay. So I have the, the page of water and I have the night of water. 
This is unexpected for some of you all. You have a secret admirer and literally an unexpected proposal. And it's fast. That's crazy. And it's fast. Well, congratulations if that's what you're wanting. If not, then it's an offer with something in regards to business. I don't think there's going to be too much deception regarding this. Um, it's the seven of seven of of swords in the reverse. Mean that you see very clearly. You cut through any deception. It's another seven, and it also goes hand in hand with this seven of cups in the reverse. Of I see something clearly. I have wise discernment, which is a gift from God. And there could be something about developing some sort of exit strategy where this offer or offer something given offer given to you is going to provide your portal or your gateway to this new loving experience to a new loving experience and I think you have been in hangman mode for quite some time with this where you've been waiting and waiting and waiting all right let's pull out this deck this is an interesting deck this is the um, heaven or hell oracle so one side has a fallen angel and the other side has the higher order angel that corresponds to that fallen angel the way that it really goes so the number one side would be Goetia number and the other side would be the Kabbalistic number That's the angelic numbers. All right. And all right. And there's 72. 72 on each side makes 144. So we'll find out either what you have to over, uh, some energy that you have to be aware of or overcome. You know, whatever it is, you already have. I feel like you will already know. If it's uh, some type of darker energy, I feel like you already have wise discernment and you're seeing clearly. You already know. So this will also tell me about what type of protection you have going on too. Okay, you may, give me a card for Virgo. I want to take it, but it's not. Hang on. If it wants to come out, it'll come out. There we go. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. You're dealing with this one, this fallen angel, number uh, Goetia number 32, Asmodee. Lust and weak will. Lust and weak will. Hmm. That would be a temporary fix then. And willpower to stay as, uh, could we do, could have to do some type of temptation. Lust and weak will. You can call on this angel. 32 is the number. Clemency and equilibrium. So yeah, about bringing everything into balance. Moderation is key. That is an influence. That's not your energy, by the way. Let's get clear. Let's get clear on that. That is not your energy. This is an influence. Mm. I have mental force. You have a higher angel guiding you over this energy. This energy could be something that would make you, just as an example, it could be, say you have a bill coming up and but for some reason, something is tempting you to buy it. But in your mind, you know that, you know what, in, in two days, it, it can be just 
eating out and versus eating in. I mean, it could be something that could really affect this bill somehow. And the, the will, like the willpower of trying to influence you not to have the power to hold off until you have to. Like, so you would have this angel trying to help you have restraint when it comes to your will so that you can accomplish the goals that you have been investing in and that you've been patiently trying to achieve for yourself as it is. And this higher order angel is giving you mental force, strong clarity and mental force. So it's to overcome this influence. This also is an influence. You take it or you leave it, but I think you'll take it. 58. Um, oh gosh. E-A-L-L. <laughs> E-A-L-L. I think is how you pronounce it. Fifty-eight. Greed. Greed is an influence, but also you have this, it's kind of sideways, so you also have this one, again, with intellectual talent. These, these uh, darker uh, influences are kind of like grouped together with greed, I want it, gotta have it, lust, weak will, and combating it or trying to combat it for you are angels of higher try to grant you insight, mental force and insight into balance, moderation. So mental force, intellectual talent, and leading you towards mastering the mind which at times is no mind. That's interesting. The hangman here is also uh, what I would say would be you. It is an angel. It is an earth angel. And then the cat even said purr. Hmm. These energies are causing delay of what you want in some way shape, form, or fashion, probably influence over your will. Of course, influence, right? They can't actually make it up. You have free will. Oh, but they can influence. And they do. And they do. But, like, you have, you have some really, I mean, you, I don't see anything where you wouldn't be, um, yeah, you have the, you have the divine power to call in to put an end to these delays and an end to these influences. You have the divine power to ask for this intellectual clarity, to ask for a halt or help even to halt something that's been going round and round for, for a while or something like that. Let's get the Kipper deck. <clears throat> Gonna take you for a ride on a picture plane. Gonna take you for a ride on a picture plane. Gonna hold ya. Gonna kiss ya in my arms. Gonna take you away from harm. That's what spirit says to you. Let them take you on a jet plane. Oh, my head got really hot when I sang that. My crown area got really hot. Woo! Lots of work. Twill and labor. Lots of work. You've put in lots of work. This is your work, too. <laughs> This is your work too. You've been doing the divine's work. You've been doing it. These energies here are un under judgment, I feel like. Wealthy man. These, do you have some energies under judgment? Or is it people on judgment being influenced? 
I feel like some energies are under judgment for making you have to work harder. Could be dealing with other energies that are greedy to you, with you, or about what you're able to create. Because if this is you, the archetype is of the wealthy man. And that means like every type of action that you need to take. What's the matter? You can't get out? Alright, alright. Here we go. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, the wealthy man archetype is like some kind of action being able to take that, that really makes you very abundant. And these other energies working through different people were causing a delay of some sort. Through influencing your own will, though. That's why it's like nobody can really make you. But yeah, you can be put in situations that are awfully hard. Let's get the other deck and see. Because this is the Kipper deck. And this one right here is the... Uh, Kipper and the Lenormand combined. The, um, <clears throat> another song is coming through. Uh, oh, maybe it's this. Maybe it's about the sun, about the divine. That song from uh, the pretenders, I'll stand by you, came through. It's spirit. Oh, why you look so sad? The tears are in your eyes. Come on and come to me now. And don't. Be afraid to cry. I get angry, or I get angry too. Well, I'm alive like you, and you're standing at the crossroads, and don't know which path to choose. Something, something, something. <laughs> Cause even when you're gone, I'll stand by you. I'll stand by you. Won't let nobody hurt you. I'll stand by you. That is spirit. That is the divine. That is the divine. And that is your ancestors. I'll stand by you. I won't let anything hurt you. I will place judgment on the things that try to. Yes. That's what I'm getting. Good gentleman and the rich girl. The archetype that is a divine counterpart for this archetype. Guys, beautiful reading tonight. What a beautiful reading. Oh, I love that. I love that S support from spirit. I'll stand by you. I'll stand by you. Even when you're off balance, I'll stand by you. <laughs> Especially when you're getting back into balance. I'll stand by you. That's what Spirit's saying over and over is I'll stand by you. I'll stand by you. I'll shine my light on you. When you're in the sun and you're sweating, I'll make I'll make the wind blow for you. <laughs> That's what Spirit is saying. Hmm. Closing out with an angel number message. Oh, beautiful. We have so many sevens, and then seven, seven comes out. What's on the bottom? I wish it was seven. <laughs> I'll take it there. Oh, by the way, I don't know who this is. I don't know. He just popped out, and the first thing I thought was, I don't know what the good gentleman's about. <laughs> I have no idea why I didn't even go further. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I don't know what he's about. It's a benevolent person. He's kind. Could be a passed on loved one because I was singing that song at the time. So, 77. It is time to move on from old patterns, habits, and fears. Now is the time to walk in the direction of your biggest desires and ambitions. Now is the time to be bold and brave. I am brave. And then I have 1111. The universe is arranging people and experiences on your path to help you succeed and help you wake up to who you truly are. I am awakening. 1111. That's what I've got for you, Virgos. Send you love and light. Bye-bye.